Let's see. All right, so back to this. Um, yeah, in the previous part, we continued on Nazi's route and we learned that we're probably gonna get a sequence or like a painting sequence is why I called it every night. So yeah, I'm almost for sure now I got duped in the plane in Natsuki mod. And again, that makes me worried of the Monica route given it is a Natsuki mod, but clearly the mod makers favor Natsuki and that's just kind of how it is. But in every mod's a Natsuki mod, like every single time I get duped in the plane in Natsuki mod, but yeah, I guess, you know, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, we'll just wrap this up. I'm going to be honest. And I'm going to be entirely honest. I'll probably put this in C tier simply because the, the weeks of the mod are so good. Like, they're actually so good. Like, the weeks alone would maybe put them in uh, top five, my, my top five favorite mods, along with uh, longer roads. Like, I'd consider those two up there. However, just the endings, they just completely fall through, fall flat, right? It's not the fact that they're bad. It's just that they completely throw the MC's character out the window in order to achieve them. And then not only that, there's also in Yuri's route, right? Two month time skip for absolutely nothing. And we don't even learn of what happened to Sayori or Natsuki. I mean, that's a complete waste of time. Just, but yeah, let's get back into it. I'm, oh my God. And then K, he's, so he's still showing up on this route. I hope to God he shows up more and that he shows up in Monica's route. That's the one redeeming factor to this mod. So that, that literally is just the one redeeming factor to this mod. So, yeah, I mean, so yeah, we'll see, we'll see. Um, yeah, and then we're just continuing on with this. So I'm a little nervous considering how we left things yesterday, but I'm pretty sure I can win her over. So he's already going into this with the mindset of trying to win her over. Okay, okay. Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, I, I don't know. That's kind of how it was in Yuri's route though. So it was only really Sayori's route. Yeah, that's kind of, my main gripe about these things is that like you can't like you need to build it up right I mean you can't just but I guess it does take place within a week so they kind of need to go like high speed lickety split and saying he's already trying to win her over but I mean like with Yuri she immediately fell head over heels for him so I mean that's kind of like yeah I don't know so yeah but we'll see we'll see besides I need to return a volume of parfait girls to her that's also true I managed to finish it last night. The, did you plan on it? But it probably won't become a new favorite or anything, but it wasn't bad. That's usually how most stuff is, right? Like if you become like kind of desensitized, it's it's a lot of it's like, if unless it's explicitly good or explicitly bad, like if you read it and it's like the best thing, you'll be like, yeah, this is good. Or if you read it and it's absolutely terrible, you'll be like, yeah, it's bad. But it's kind of anything that's not at those extremes, you'll just be like, it was all right. Let's give the team to notice me as I walk over to her. Let's see. She's once again busy inspecting the boxes in the closet. Hey, Natsuki, I've got your... Ah, not again. Stop moving my boxes. God, like, is she, does, does she not understand that, you know... Because, A, first off, the club was literally, like, about to be disbanded because they couldn't get another member. And then, B, that kind of goes hand in hand with other people using the space, right? The space doesn't belong to you. I mean... No matter how, you know, terrible your life is, others don't need to like, that's not other people's problems, right? You know, the teacher who's freaking teaching however many are students and they use that closet, you know, that's not their problem. So it's like, you know, you make do of the space you've got right before it gets taken away. <laughs> Cause I mean, this glove's literally on teetering on the edge of uh, existence. So the one I want is on the top shelf and now I can't reach it. Then get someone else to. Sorry, Natsuki, it's out of my hands. Uh, literally, the classroom teacher. That's why I'm like, you know, this isn't your closet. I can help you get down if you want. No, I don't need help. I can do it myself. Insecurity. All right, if you insist. Natsuki turns to face me. And that goes double for you. He didn't even say anything. Yeah, what did I do? He's like, he was literally just standing there. She turns towards the closet and looks up at her box. I can tell she was trying to come up with a plan to get down. I really want to offer to help. Liz, this is something where you just need to let them fail and then they would realize that, oh yeah, they actually do need help. But I also like my internal organs right where they are. That like this, you, you need to recognize when people are just too stubborn to quit, you just got to let them go until they fail and then they come back to you. After a few moments of thinking, Natsuki's eyes left and she steps away from the closet. She returns with a rolling chair. That's a, the, the, I, I always critiqued this because there were so many just stationary chairs, non-rolling chairs that she could have used. And like, I guess that shows kind of 
the intel her intelligence but it's a bit higher than the archers in the room which would give Natsuki just the Haichinia box I guess that's the reason but still right if anything you're better off trying to stack two stationary chairs on top of each other however um Natsuki not one word that's you you just got a letter fail man I mean okay then Natsuki standing by the chair at the triumphant grin the wheels on his chair don't roll very well if I'm careful I should be able to get the box down without it moving she's got a plan a crazy dangerous poorly thought out plan yeah, that's the point, right? You just got to let people fail sometimes. What a plan at any rate. I saw I stand by and watch as she had Vince and Ian A help. As he moves the chair into position, starts to step on it. She stops suddenly and shoots me an angry look. Take three steps back. Why? Um, why? No way, Emily. You're A, you're not tall enough. B, like, okay. I mean, like, what, how, how, would, how would that even work, right? He needs to, like, freaking slide under the rolling chair. Like, that wouldn't even, like... That wouldn't even work. Like, just think think about it, right? Because she's standing on the chair, right? He wouldn't be able to do that. This is just, like, not – I don't know. That's – okay. This, this is just something where you got to let them be idiots and then let them reap the repercussions. Natsuki, I wouldn't even think of doing that. You just got to admit that, you know, she's flawed. And, like, you know, you just got to let them fail. You There's no point in arguing with it. Sure, I totally believe you. No one cares. If sarcasm could cut, I'd be bloody ribbons right now. Now step back. What's she going to do if you don't? I mean, that's the real question. That's a, that's a real question, right? She's freaking staying on a rolling chair, you know? She's going to try and, like, what, punch us, hit us, right? Fall off the chair, break, freaking break her neck. Like, I immediately take three steps back. I'm not interested in getting Natsuki even more angry with me. Once she's satisfied, I'm far enough away. She carefully steps onto a chair. Sure enough, the chair doesn't move under her weight. Okay, yeah, but I can't help but notice a smirk on her face. She carefully reaches up and puts her hands around the box to manga. Almost got it. Well, I mean, she has it in this picture, but she manages to get her fingertips around the edge of the box. I can see a look of triumph on her face as she inches the box towards her. Finally, she gets the box in her hands and off the shelf. Unfortunately, the sun shift away causes her to lose her balance. She catches herself, but all the movement just causes the chair to roll slightly. Whoa. Everything seems to move. move. This is like, this is something, you, like I said, you just got to let them fail at this point, right? There's, it's not something worth like, it really just isn't something worth trying to like argue with or intervene with. You just got to let people fail sometimes. Natsuki's trying to catch herself, but as she moves, the chair moves in the opposite direction. Natsuki, okay. I start to run towards her, but I'm too late. Natsuki comes tumbling down, box and all. Okay, she's already laying on the floor by the time I reach her. Dead. Her box and long is lying on side. Several volumes have spilled out onto the floor. Or I can offer to help Natsuki out. Monica comes rushing over. Is everything right over here? Uh, yeah, surely. Everything's going well. I glance over at Natsuki, then position myself between her and Monica. I don't know her that well, but figure Natsuki's kind that doesn't want our people to make a fuss over her. This is retarded. She's the club leader. I mean, she, you, like, she's literally responsible for the safety of her subordinates. So it's like, why are you trying to be like this? Because this is like, because if you can white knight, if it's logical, right? Like if it makes sense, but this is not a logical situation where you would do that. Because she's club leader. And again, she's responsible for her subordinates. I talk about this, right? So you gain in the way, like that's retarded. We just dropped the box. Oh, wow. Uh, no wonder. We're fine. Meanwhile, Nasi is like lying dead behind him. We're all fine here now. Thank you. Shut up, please. I, I'm, I'm going to need to like pinch myself to make it through this route, this episode. How are you? I'm, I should probably just quit this mod. Anka gives me a weird look and chokes herself. This is retarded. I exhale and turn around and check on Nazi. She's already crawling over the box to gather up this build manga. I can hear her muttering to herself. Why? Because you're an idiot. This, that's, that, that's why. Because this is something you can't even blame others in this situation. You have to, this is why I said you just got to let people fail, right? People who are too stubborn, you just got to let them fail, right? And then ultimately, this is what will happen. They'll learn that, oh, they'll reap the repercussions, right? You can't blame anyone else in this situation because you brought that upon yourself. Why does everything have to be so hard? You were the one who tried to, I, I don't even know. I'm not certain if I should offer it. You, you're an idiot. It's, this should have been something where Monica consoled her or condoled her, but the MC, I don't know. But after a moment, the question quickly becomes moot. Natsuki picks up one of her volumes of manga, stares at the cover. Her eyes wind and her jaw drops. The top corner has gone fold over in the fall. Now the cover is a crease line. And she tries to fold the cover back a few times to no effect. Finally, she tosses the volume away and sits quietly for a moment. I decide this probably when I should say something. Hey, it's not that bad. <laughs> wow, if you put it in the box with the R volumes, maybe the crease will get flattened out. It doesn't matter. It's stupid anyway. All I can tell is she's angry. That wasn't as forceful as I was expect. Um, please go away. Leave me alone. Yeah, this, like I said, you just gotta let people deal with their own repercussions of their stubbornness. You just, there's no point in laying, you know, trying to argue with someone who's stubborn. So, 
Spread out your sheets. I can tell she's signing back tears. Natsuki, are you deaf? They say go away. <laughs> and what you gonna do if you don't? That's the big, that's the real question, right? You don't know anything. I know you're an idiot and a retard. You can't possibly understand what it's like to be me. And I sure as hell don't want you feeling sorry for me. So take your stupid grin and lame pickup lines and go bug someone else. Okay. He, hey, how about you goes bug say Sayori? Goes bug Monica. That I, I wish you'd go bug Monica. Get a Monica episode. Let's see. Dummy. Ouch. I don't see it. Yeah, it's like this. You just got to let people reap their own repercussions. You know, you just got to let people fail. People who are too stubborn. You just got to let them fail and then deal with that. Turn, turn, turn to leave Natsuki on to her spilled manga. But I remember something I need to do first. I turn back in giant place to purse wine and parfait girls on the desk next to her. I can tell she's looking at out of the corner of her eye. <laughs> Teleport. And then I head back to the front of the classroom. Monica and Sayori are discussing something. I think I'll try to talk to Sayori when they are done. About? Is he really going to talk to Sayori about Natsuki? Are you kidding me? Sniff. Retard. Dummy. Okay. I'm okay. <laughs> sure. Let's see. Looks fine. I don't see any damage to it. <laughs> I mean, didn't, no one cares. You probably just, hey, what's this thing stuck in the pages? What do you mean? A bookmark? With all... What do you mean? So, okay, so he got the bookmark. Because I was like, wait, what? Did he draw? Did he do something? But no, that's um bookmark he got. But, because I guess he saw the, um what's it called? He saw the tag on the front, and that probably was what uh, motivated him to get it. He left a note, Natsuki. I finally remember where I'd seen Parfait Girls before. About a year ago, I won a grab bag in anime convention. This bookmark was one of the prizes inside. I didn't recognize the character, so I tossed it into my drawer and forgot about it. I remember the first time. I remember I still had it. I thought you might like to have it since it's your favorite series. Well, it's her only series, right? Let's put it that way. I hope it finds, wait, what does it say? Hold on. I hope it helps you find your place. Let's see, he gave me, well, I mean, it was a no brainer decision really because it wasn't like he was using it. I don't know what those two are talking about, but Sayori seems pretty excited. She's apparently drawn something on a sheet of paper that she keeps showing Monica. I can see what it is, but it must be good since Monica keeps denying an approval. I guess that's the, um. those are the uh, posters for the, uh, that announcing their like uh, festival plans or festival prep. So those are the posters. Yeah, those are the posters. Uh, what would you call it? Um, advertising the literature club for the uh, festival. So let's see. I suddenly get the impression that I'm not up here by myself anymore. He's like, I feel another's presence. I turn to the side. See, Nasty standing near my desk. She turns her eyes away from me as soon as I look at her. I swear to God, please don't say something stupid. And I'm saying that to her. Not normally I say that to the MC. Her knees are pressed close together. Her shoulders are slumped down. She's holding up the second volume of Parfait Girls with her elbows pulled close to her body. She has a very guilty look on her face. She'll occasionally turn her eyes towards me and back away when we make eye contact. I let her stand there for a moment. I'm a bit nervous. Just let her say something. Just keep staring. I mean, she's got to say something. Like, she's the one initiating the conversation. So I'm a bit nervous about saying anything after. That's a her problem. Finally, I must drop some courage. So are you having a rough day? No, nah, everything's, wow, great contribution. Natsuki looks at me and turns her eyes away again. She slowly nods her head up and down. You want to talk about it? She doesn't look at me this time. She slowly turns her head from side to side. Where's Yuri in all this? Because we know Sayori's so talking to Monica. Yuri's probably somewhere. I don't know. Whatever it is that's bothering her, she appears to want to keep it up to herself. Okay. Do you want to read the second volume? <laughs> nope. It's, she looks up at me again. She holds my gaze for a few moments and turns her eyes to the floor. She sways slightly, starts to draw in a circle on the floor with her left foot. I mean, I've heard the second volume is when the plot really picks up. You got to let her speak, right? You, it's not a conversation if it's only one way. She stops swaying. Her eyes dart up and meet mine. Bitch, I don't speak fucking sign language. Like, say something. We look into each other's eyes for a few moments. And then, slowly, Natsuki begins to smile. Okay, I cut to black. Uh, where are we now? Okay, poem time. It's time to read our poems. This is going to be interesting. I want to see, um, because obviously we knew Natsuki and Yuri's interaction. We actually know Natsuki and Yuri's interaction from day two as well. I'm interested to see Natsuki and Monica's interaction because they'll probably, she'll probably be like, oh, what, what happened earlier? She'll be like, oh, it's nothing. But I put real effort into it last night. I'm curious to see what Natsuki, yeah, he's already just like, I'm trying to win over Natsuki. Yuri seems to be a boy her. So we're still talking to Monica about poster for something or other. So so I'd show my poem to Natsuki first. Okay, I'm going to skip the poem. It doesn't take Natsuki long to read my poem. Hmm. Well, what do you think? It's not as long as yesterday's. Your word choice is interesting as well. Oh, how so? Well, yesterday you were using all these fancy words, words like heaven sent world. Now you're using more simple to a point where it's like games and blanket. If, if I see blanket in a poem, I'm throwing the poem out. I must say, I approve of the change. It, it's like, I'm, I'm not 10. Now, hold on a second. You didn't say you impressed me. I said, it. no one cares. You got a way to go before you impress me. Oh, Oh, teach on that old mistress of the Witten Lord. Ah, I'm glad someone noticed. Take a look at this. 
uh, not even reading that. All right, pay attention. This poem isn't really about what's he, that's how it is for almost all of them. The most important person isn't the speaker. It's through the speaker's words, we learn more than we do, more about them than we do about Amy. Find out what he or she is a very cruel, judgmental person who just needs to leave Amy alone and let her enjoy your spires in peace. Does that make sense to you? Uh, but here's the thing. That's actually a flawed argument, though. So, yeah, just because here's the thing, right? Obviously, it makes sense, but or it makes sense on the surface level at first glance. But it's ultimately a flawed argument, because if you accept that people just be like, oh, leave them alone, let them enjoy whatever they enjoy in peace. The question is, what if they enjoy negatively affects other people, right? Like people, serial killers don't kill without reason. Like they kill because they enjoy it or they, whatever, they find it fitting in whatever grander purpose that they acquire out of it. Or like, let's say cults, you know, like they obviously, you know, they, again, they do, that's more so fitted towards whatever grander purpose I mentioned with the serial killers. It's like, you can make the same argument, oh, just let them enjoy what they enjoy in peace, right? It, it's a flawed argument. But in this case, it it passes or it checks out. But I, that's why I'm saying, like, it's not a universal argument. Uh, were you listening at all? Is Amy a real person? Amy is not Steve. Huh? I'm just kidding. I understand what you're saying. I just need a sec to write that down. Wait, what? write what down? The stuff you're telling me is he's really taking notes are you kidding me i actually want to get back some so basically write like a retard as well as notes are gonna say nobody's ever well you have plenty by the time we're done with you of course my advice would be most useful so make sure you highlight or something okay oh i don't doubt it i mean i said your poem when you wrote mine last night how did wait what since when did he get her poem because i thought she kept it I, what do you mean how did he acquire that the Eagles can fly one. I picked it up after you. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. I was like, wait, how did he get it? It really helped me out while I was writing. Nazi suddenly goes quiet. I'll take a moment to look up for my notes. Are you all right? So you base your poem on my writing? Yeah. It's like, uh, yeah. Nazi starts breathing quickly. She's going to freaking pass out. I've Okay, bye. See ya. All right. Okay. <laughs> I, I thought it was going to be the MC and uh, sharing with someone else, but get a hold of yourself, Nazi. That doesn't mean anything just because he actually paid attention. Yeah, but here's the thing, because he's still got to share with everyone else, right? So he's still going to get advice from everyone else, but obviously he doesn't care. So yeah, so I mean, I don't know. This, th this is why, like, here's the thing. I know this is a poor portrayal of Natsuki. I, I've talked about how Yuri and Natsuki were each highly controversial portrayals. Because especially because of uh, Nats, like New Eyes completely changed my view of uh, Yuri and Natsuki. Longer Roads completely changed my view of Monica. Obviously, I played multiple Sayori mods, but in New Eyes, Natsuki isn't just toxic and entirely self insecure as opposed to this mod. This is a prime reason why she's my least favorite. And again, that doesn't mean I hate her because this is just a poor portrayal, right? Or a more highly controversial portrayal. But much, but regardless, you know. A toxic and insecure portrayal nonetheless i can't i don't want to get hurt and you you know you can't you're already hurting like what the difference will it make nazi hasn't come back yet i'm just kind of saying here everyone else needs to share poems you want to move on to the next person oh there you are okay teleports i really had to go and he's like it's only been 30 seconds what are you talking about like like um, um, um your poem is much better than yesterday's i'm really impressed but you said accept the praise uh nope Anyway, you can take this home poem home to say if you want. She literally has to share with everyone else. After, okay, that's why I'm like, what are you talking about? Oh, sure. I mean, it's just for studying. Not for AR reason at all, okay? What other, this isn't freaking Yuri. What are you talking about? Whatever you say. That's why I'm like, what are you insinuating? Hmm. Hmm. What's this? I mean, she's reading it. What do you mean? Like, what's that supposed to mean? Don't be so freaking insecure. There's a lot to absorb here. I don't think it'd be too off thought if I were to assume that this poem isn't really about a girl who likes spires, correct? Uh, it's fine, Natsuki. Really, it is. It's just, you're Amy in this poem, aren't you? That's why I'm like, Monica, she pretty much saw through every poem besides a couple of uh, Sayori ones, which were related to her more deeper issues, and Yuri's as well. It, and it wasn't even a couple. She didn't saw through every poem, but one related to Sayori and her deeper issues, and one related to Yuri and her deeper issues, obviously. But yeah, that's why it's like, I mean, you get to go, you go to go to great, Jesus Christ. I mean, you go to great lengths to hide your manga in our club room. So I think that's what this, I know what this poem is really about. People are just so mean. I know. I used to be around a lot of people like that when I was in the debate club. You were in the debate club, weren't you? That, what kind of question is this? Of course you was. Yes, I was. 
Because the club mostly full of people who thought they were better than everyone else. I, I you would catch me dead if I was joined the debate club. That's like that's a freaking like that's the real intellectuals club that the MC was talking about. I'm ashamed to say I tried to be like them for a while. I guess I wanted them to accept me. But one day I saw him making fun of a girl on our team. It was just mind her own business. Because we know she was the captain, right? So this was probably something she was doing either her first or second year. And then her third year, she realized, like, wait, this is retarded. They were talking just loud enough so she could hear them. The girl looked like she was about to cry. She got them left. <laughs> In before, hey, I'm going to call her out right now. That girl was Natsuki. I, I guarantee you that girl is either Natsuki or Yuri. I guarantee. I will. I bet my life that that girl is either Natsuki or Yuri. So I guess you could say that I could easily be a speaker in this poem. Wow. I don't think I've ever heard you talk about yourself so much. Well, I mean, because mostly she's focused on the club. So, uh -huh. well, I do tend to be a rather private person. And to be fair, you don't really talk about yourself that much either. That's why I'm like, no one talks about themselves. Well, a good point. So I can't help but notice that the members of our little literature club aren't the most popular people in school. Did you form this club as a sort of space face for people who, you know, don't fit in? Well, I had several. That's why I'm like this, this, because obviously to everyone else externally they would kind of be like oh why would you know school star class star uh popular girl monica start some random club right for just losers but or that's how x that's how others would see it right or that's how external people would see that externally but re in reality in her position it was a no-brainer because besides that she also just enjoyed it more so her own personal fulfillment reasons right she didn't want, she, like she said, didn't want to be in the debate club. So this was really a no-brainer move for her. But I really did want it to be a safe place for people to relax and be themselves. So I suppose you're saying it would be accurate, Natsuki. Huh. Well, I have to say that I'm thankful for this club, especially since you don't judge me for my love of manga. Oh, uh, well, we all have our spiders, I suppose. And that's related to your. All right, Sarah, I guess it's our turn to share poems. Yay. I've really been looking forward to reading your poem today, Natsuki. I bet it's amazing. Oh, Sayori, stop it. My poems aren't that good. Hmm. That was token humility. By all means, keep telling me how awesome I am. Sure, you may laugh now. Anyway, let me show you my poem first. Uh, sure. It's like, wow, Sayori. This one's a bit more complex than yesterday's. Yeah, and that's the one related to sacrificing her own or increasing others' happiness at the expense of her own. Yep, I wanted to branch out some. Yeah. So, you really feel this way, Sayori? Oh, what do you mean, Natsuki? Well, it's a poem about making our people happy at the expense of your own happiness. You don't feel that way, do you? I mean, you're so peppy. I don't, I don't figure you'd ever run out of happiness. But that's 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 the facade right you'd think because if someone would read this poem they wouldn't think that oh there's no way you could be unhappy oh you're just so happy like if they if you take the poem as kind of their true self or whatnot then you'd be like is that really how you feel you wouldn't just be like oh there's no way that could be the case making our people's happy is the most important thing i guess why i was born to be the sunshine in everyone else's lives in that that's great and all, and all but what about sunshine in your life well if our people are happy and that makes me happy so in a sense, I'm bringing myself sunshine by bringing everyone else sunshine. Huh, but that's not how it works. I guess that's all right, but just make sure to focus on yourself some. Why is it cut to black? Are you kidding? We used to go, we used to, go to the beaches and family from what, as well. Okay, so we're cutting straight to this. This is interesting because we saw this conversation in Yuri's episode. Because after they shared their poem today, their poem would, or their poem for this day was about um, similar topics. So, and then this is when they had the conversation you know, they sort of made up and then they also talked about writing the poem for tomorrow using the same topic as the beach. So I think our last trip was in my mom's last days. She wasn't feeling too well, but she insisted we take trips as a family. I remember building sandcastles and watching the waves, watching my footprints. I kept asking my mom where they went. I remember my dad laughed at that. That may have been the last time I heard him. Heard him laugh or be happy. And, all right, we'll write about the beach tonight. Compare poems tomorrow. Deal? Yes, sir, deal. All right, then. See you tomorrow, Yuri. And you as well, Natsuki. This is interesting that we cut straight to that, and now we're in home. Well, I haven't thought about that beach trip in a while. I miss those days. Oh, I remember we had a camera with us where we went. Mom and Papa took so many pictures. Don't look back at them. That won't bring despair. I think they ended up in a box in the closet. Let me see. Ah, here it is. Wow, there are so many. Here's me playing in the sand. Papa holding me in his lap. And where's... No. Oh, no. He didn't. What? He threw out, though, all the ones with her? That's what I'm presuming. Man, what day? Okay, just ju after an eventful lurch club meeting and a mishap with my new box of anime, I finally time find Sam watch a few. Oh yeah, because that was oh my god, that interaction was in Sayori's episode when he went to actually pick it up, and then he met Mon, and then he saw Monica there, and ultimately she called him out for the anime because she knew what it was. Found I enjoy read a bit more than I thought I would, but anime is still my first love. Okay, it's like yeah, I can't read. My new series is in a fancy world and stars feisty sorcerers or a dumb swordsman psychic. I don't know what that's referring to. 
It's a bit slow to start, but I've really gotten into it so much. In fact, I'm excited to head off to the bookstore, see if they have a manga series based on it. Oh, wow. Guess who we're going to see there? Natsuki. I am in the Lurch Club after all, so I should always be looking for new things to read. I bet we see Natsuki there. Bet my soul. As I walk to a bookstore, I buy a manga. I find my thoughts drifting in Natsuki. I didn't know what to think of her at first. I'm honestly still trying to figure her out. She really is all over the place. She really seemed to warm to me when she found out I like manga, but then she turned on me pretty quickly and didn't side with her in an argument. That was a retarded argument. You shouldn't have sided with anyone like he did. She seems to be better now, so I guess she had a hard day, but still. I won't get to know her about it, but I'm a little worried that she may be might be like that all the time. At any rate, I'm at the bookstore now. Let's see what they've got. Hmm. Let's see. Saints. I don't know any of these. Here we go, Slayers. Pick up the first line. I have to a comfortable place to sit. I like to flip through volumes to see how they are different from the anime before I buy them. So turn the cord towards Pad's stairs. The store provides. I run to familiar face. Natsuki. Oh, wow. Natsuki is standing in front of a different shelf of manga. She's flipping through on the volumes. I can't see cover a television one. Raven, what are you doing here? I won't, how is she going to afford that? Hold up my volume manga. Probably the same thing you're doing. She smirks and chose me to cover the manga she's looking at. Features a long swordsman facing off against a massive skinless giant. How does that even work? Oh, that's why I was like. That's a far cry from Parfait Girls. I don't see sizes. Her smirk disappears. Her expression seems almost tired. Yeah, well, it seems about battling giants. It kind of fits my mood, I guess. And also, we know the only reason she likes Parfait Girls so much is because it's the only one she has. So, yeah, that's why I'm like, there's a lot packed into that statement. I know you didn't want to talk about it earlier, but are you doing all right? I see glances in my direction. The tired expression never leaves her face because she knew her father threw out all the pictures regarding her mother. So, I just I had a discussion with my dad the other day, and that was about work. Nothing major. Just kind of put me in a sour mood. Yeah, I've been there. Or Because this was, um, this is the same day. But either other day she means about work or today, which would mean about uh, the pictures. My mom keeps pestering me to go outside more. And I always say, Mommy, I'm amazing here. Why would I leave? It's like, she's like, well, I might as well move the TV outside. This is off to no end. Natsuki asks that. I haven't really seen inside of her yet. I have to admit, I kind of like happy Natsuki. Hey, um, the smile disappears. Natsuki's expression changed to the guilty look she had earlier today. Look, I, uh. I'm sorry about, you know, earlier today. Well, that's new. Oh, so I take it you didn't mean when you say you didn't want me in the club? Well, I didn't at first, but I guess you're kind of cool. I mean, it's nice to have someone talk about Mongo with his own. That's all I meant, of course. And nothing more, nothing more. Maybe you can tell me what's going on with this Titan series. It's kind of confusing. She hands me a volume she's looking at, then shifts position, so she is standing next to me. The giants appear and start eating people. In the last of humanity, your treats to a walled city to be safe from them. Here, this page is a diagram. I point to a two-page spread in the manga. Now he leans in close to look at it, then stands up straight again. Maybe it's just me. But she seems to be standing a little closer to me than she was before. Yeah, because she needs to look at the picture, you dumbass. Anyway, the humans train people to use to use this special gear that lets them swing around at high speeds. Here, take a look at this part. Again, I show Nancy pages. And she leans in to look at them. When she raises her head back up, she moves a little bit closer. Her head's practically touching my shoulder. Um, anyway, if I told you any more, I'd spoil. You'd probably read it on your own. Oh, but I like hearing you explain it. I turn to look at her. She's looking right up in my eyes without turning away. I notice her face is slightly red. Um, I mean, you're so good at explaining anything, everything. I just figured you shouldn't stop, right? You may as well keep going on. You keep talking for a while. That is, if you want to. Wow. Nancy's acting kind of nervous all of a sudden. But you're having the freaking drama in the middle of the bookstore. See, I'm her. There's an awkward moment. I fumble with my words. I'm not really sure how to respond in a situation like this. As I continue to trip over my own words, Nancy continues to look at me like she's waiting for me to respond. My floundering continues for a moment or two. I heard the sound of the front door opening. I notice an older man frantically walking into the store. He starts saying a name over and over. Not quite not quite a yell, but loud. Oh, so this is, okay, so this is Natsuki's dad, presumably. That's why I was like, who the hell is this dude? It was an older dude. I thought maybe it was Kay, but no, as an older dude, it's probably Natsuki's dad. Haruka, yeah, that's Natsuki. The odd distraction snaps me out of my inelegant trance as I turn to look at the man. Huh? That's weird. I wonder who, he's like, oh. I turn back towards Natsuki. Her eyes are wide and her face is gone white. Natsuki, what's, how did he find me? Her voice, it, it, it's a no-brainer decision, right? This is what happens when you piss off your old man. Before I can respond, you guys can quickly pull me behind the bookshelf, out of sight from the old man. Hey, shh. We are on the other side of the bookshelf now, facing away from the front door. Both of us are standing on the floor. I see he's close to the edge of the shelf and peering around the corner to keep tabs on where the old man's standing. Okay, who is that guy? Why, and why are you hiding from me? Nazi responds without looking at me. He's my dad. Huh? Shh. I lean over Nazi and poke my hand around the shelf with her. The old man is mostly white hair with only pepper trace of black. He has a short beard to match. All of his hair is somewhat uncomfortable and scraggly. He's wearing a large pair of dark tinted glasses. His face is weathered and craggy. If I saw him at a glance, I assume he was Nazi's grandfather. Okay, so that's your dad. Why are we hiding from him again? I don't want him to see me with a guy. Why? D bitch, then just send him away. That's, there's, that's too easy, right? Have him go to a different aisle. Is he super strict? He's not going to chase me around with the sword just for talking to you. Is he? Bitch, he's already got the fucking sword on him. You're dead. I mean, he's never seen me talk to a guy before. Literally just send him to a different aisle. That's too easy. I really don't want to know how to react. 
Oh, don't talk to my guys. Eh? I'm flattered. Damn, why is he roasting her in this situation? Stop. Honestly, he looks around the corner again and looks back at me. His, her expression is almost sad. Like she has to leave, but doesn't want to. She reaches into her pocket and pulls out some light, which she then hands to me. Could you do me a favor? Bitch, you're actually paying him? I was going to buy that volume on and seek it home, but with Papa here. Oh, I see. Would you mind buying it for me? You can bring it to school tomorrow. Hand it off. I'm sure. But why are you hiding this from your dad? Honestly, he looks away. Her pain expression tells me that there's a story behind her actions that she probably doesn't want to share. I decided to wave in our time. Okay, don't worry about it. Meet me at lunch tomorrow and hand it off. She smiles as her eyes light up. Thanks. See you tomorrow. Nasi takes another look around the bookshelf and stands up and walks over to her father. He bends over towards him to see what is happening. Nasi's father seems confused and keeps asking for Haruka. She's talking to him quietly as if she's trying to calm him down. Because we know, I'm pretty sure Haruka is, um, because we either guess that A, it was the mother's name, his wife's name. B, it's Natsuki's nickname. Or C, it's, uh, I don't, well, there is no C, but I, this, there's kind of evidence for both, really. After a short discussion that I can hear, two of them lead the bookstore together. I take a moment to process what I've just seen, then stamp and head to the register with Natsuki's mantra. Keep replaying the C now in my head as I walk home. I have so many questions about Natsuki's father. And why he's so afraid and joy to hobby with him around. Probably because that was a hobby her mother enjoyed. That's probably the reason. Ten years ago. Okay, so one year later. Natsuki, I've been thinking. Yes, Mama? What would you think if we took a trip to the beach today? Ah, I'd love to go to the beach. Now, now. I don't think your mother's up for it today, Natsuki. Oh, but Papa, I want to play in the sand and go swim in the water. Please, can we go? Of course, dear. You know what? Your swimsuit. So presumably, this was on the last day they went to the beach together. Yay, Natsuki. Oh, she's already run off. Dear, you know you need your rest. Remember what the doctor said. The doctor said I have a few months at best. If I don't exert myself, I might be up. I might be able to add a month or so of that, but I don't want Natsuki to remember me as a bedridden invalid in my last days. And this is a legitimate move on the part of Natsuki's mother, right? Like, this is a legitimate move. I would do the same thing, right? If you got a few months at most, you might as well make them the best months of your life, right? You know, adding one more month isn't going to fucking, isn't going to change anything if you don't do anything with it. I want to have happy memories of me. Let her have this. Oh, you're having an our spell. Sit down and breathe slowly. I've got it. Thank you. I don't want to lose you. I darling, you can't stop this from happening. That's why I'm like, well, you don't have a choice. All you can do is love me for a time we have left. Love our daughter for both of us when I'm gone. I don't know if I can handle living without you. Shh. I love you, Akio. So that's his name. Okay. And then her, I love you, Haruka. So that is the mother's. That's why I was, because it was, that was, it was something where there was evidence for both. It was either the wife's name or Nasuki's name. But yeah, now we know that's definitely the case. So he was right in that he couldn't live without her ultimately. So yeah, I mean, there's that. So it's like, yeah, I mean, just being entirely honest though, that was cause he was, he knew that like, it was probably something he knew where he couldn't live without her. And that ultimately ended up becoming true. So, um, cause that's just kind of how it is. Unfortunately, you can't even blame him in this instance. Right. Cause he knew that he wouldn't be able to do it. And you know, that was just, that's kind of just the unfortunate reality, right? Lunch bell rings in the other words, nice stuff together. Let's put my books in my bag. No sassy manga from the bookstore. She told me to give it her today at school. Here she'll be at the ledge company, but I thought I'd see if I could try and find her before then. Now it seems like a good, good time is saying, I wander around the cafeteria looking for Natsuki. I've never seen her before during lunch people. I've also never really looked for her. I look around for people. I'm not really having any luck. Feel a little while. I give up and get in line to order some sweet rolls. I decide to head down one of the less populated halls, so in peace. This might also be a good time to look over my poem to make sure it's ready for a club meet. I guarantee he meets Natsuki in this hallway. I mean, there's, there's no reason why we'd be doing this otherwise. However, something catches my eyes. I sit down to eat. Natsuki? Wow! I just catch a glimpse of Natsuki just peering around the corner into an our hallway. I decide to catch up to her. Hey, Natsuki, wait up. I stand up and walk in the direction I saw her going, but as I turn the corner, please, please be K. Please be K. Where'd she go? Oh, damn it. Now she should have been right here, but I don't see her anymore. I check around a bit confused. That's where I noticed one of the doors in the hallway slightly ajar. Intrigued, I pulled open. Inside's a ladder. Uh, what? Where is this? I was really hoping he turns the corner to see Kay and Natsuki. Oh, my God. But yeah, I've already come this far, so I figured I went to a client and see where it leads. After a short time, I found myself in front of a door. I realized this door leads to the roof. Honestly, the roof access door should be locked, but security tends to be kind of lax around here. Open the door and step out into the roof. Let me guess. Natsuki's there. Wow. And this is the standard roof. Uh, the roof was closed off to his students a little while ago. It used to be a sore break area, but parts of it had fallen into disrepair. Sure enough, a portion of the fence on the area to arrive at the door has fallen down. But I'm struck by how windy it is out here. There's an almost constant stream of light wind that picks up every so often. Despite that, it's very quiet up here. I also never realized just how high our school building is. And you see most of the town sprouting up alone. We can too. After taking a look, I turn my head and notice that Nazi's up here as well. She's facing away from me with her arms folded. I can't see your face, but I can tell from her bilingual, which I see is deep in thought. 
I almost wonder if I should just leave her be one. Curious as why she's up here by herself. Besides, I still need to get to my mom and get to her. I call out to her. Natsuki. She's visibly startled as she quickly turns around. <laughs> it's like, what? How did you find me here? I saw you disappear around the corner and found the door. Oh. She folds her arms again and looks away as if she is unsure of what to say. There's a moment of silence accentuated by a gust of wind that is blown by us. I figure I need to say something. I brought your manga from last night. Oh, thank you. She still seems like she doesn't know what to say because you inv- intruded in her private area. Like, presumably, she's the only one up here. It's almost acting nervous. So, do you come up here often? Wow. Great contribution. Not all the time. I actually found the way up here while I was having a bad day once. Ever since then, I come here whenever I need to be alone. I mean, literature club's awesome, all, but it's just hard sometimes. There's a lot going on at home. People at school are jerks. Sometimes they just need some me time, you know? Yeah, I hear that. I reach in my bag and pull out the volume manga she bought last night. Here's this. Oh, thanks. I see a taste of mine for me. He kept the change, though. She reaches into her pocket and pulls out a book manga. I know that's the parfait girl once. I gave her yesterday. She sticks it in the front cover of the manga. It looks at me and smiles. I'll leave it there so I can use it when I start reading. Smile back at her. Glad to see you're getting some use out of that. Yeah, well, it helps me find my place. Heh, <sighs> yeah. We stand silent for a moment. Moon picks up again, not, catches Natsuki's pigtails. A few strands of hair blow in front of her eyes. She's looking intently at me, never once breaking her gaze. Um, I'll just head on out so you can have your time to yourself. Because here's the thing. This, obviously, he needs to say this regardless. He's not just going to be like, oh, yeah, I'm going to stay here now. He needs to say this regardless. You know, ultimately, be up to her whether she lets that happen or tries to, get, to prevent him. I turn to leave, but, um... I mean, I say I like to be alone up here, but there's no reason we can't be alone together. That's not how that works. I chuckle at that statement. Well, if you insist. I mean, I never turned down the opportunity to spend time with... Why would you even say that, though? Like, he literally just jeopardized it. Like, he just ruined it. She sees a prickle at that statement. Don't. She gets mad for a moment. They catch us herself. She closes her eyes and lets out breath. Please don't call me cute. I just don't like it. Oh, all right. I'm sorry. How did he... He knew that before, though. It's okay, I suppose. I should actually tell people that more often. Um, she looks away and blushes slightly. You could call me pretty if you like. Because, I mean, that's more... Because here's the thing. They, they insinuate different things, right? So this is, like, a more neutral version, right? It's more related to overall as opposed to a specific uh, type of beauty, you can call it. Oh, sure thing, pretty if you like. Okay, I'm going to end the... No, no, no. I was... I can't believe you just said that. I hate this so much. Okay. I'm this is where you start beating his ass. She looks confused for a moment. Then the realization missed her. She bursts out laughing. Ha, you dork. She playfully shoves me as I laugh with her. We sit down and eat lunch together on the rooftop. Natsuki does most of the talking. She gives her opinions on very small issues, mixed with a little bit of school gossip. Natsuki didn't expect to hear so talkative. She's much more easygoing when she's comfortable. Natsuki wish she was like this more often. This lunch period is near its end. We head down the ladder to get back into the main part of the building. Okay, and okay, literature club time. While we're walking, Nancy starts quizzing me about the new mind she just bought. She, literally, what? So, how come humanity has such a hard time finding these giants? Because they're giants. What do you mean? Can't they just use planes and tanks and stuff? Yeah, that makes sense. Well, humanity seems to have regressed as far as technology. They still have large cannons, but no more planes and tanks. Well, wow, rip. So, they use cans to fight these giants? Yeah, but they aren't very effective. Instead, they use these special packs that have grappling cords in them. They can zip around and use swords to cut the weak spots on the back of the giants' necks. Why don't they just put razors or something on the cannonballs? Because the series is really steady about the best and worst of humanity. Things like that don't really matter. It sounds like an excuse to have cool aerial sword fight scenes. That, that's that's true. She laughs triumphantly. I'm just about to offer a retort, but I suddenly hear a familiar voice singing in the hallway. My son sh- Oh, that's Sayori. I was about to say, please be K. But no, it's Sayori. So she's clearly talking about the MC here. Does she... I'm not sure if she had an interaction with MC in the club. Oh, even Natsuki. Um, Sayori glanced back and forth. Natsuki and myself... She looks confused, but quickly puts on a happy face. So you two must have spent lunch together. Yeah, I ran into Natsuki at the bookstore yesterday, and she needed me to bring her some, bring her some manga about Oh, wow, wow, wow. Thanks again for that, by the way. Oh, so you two are spending a lot of time together then. Yeah. 